Hello everyone, it's Bradley. So today this is a voice recording to make an animation that people asked. I think the idea was coming from a Houdini tutorial and he was uh, trying to replicate that uh, within Blender. So let's just start. So here we're in Blender, let's start uh, with an object and add a jump node tree. As always, I'm going to use the presets which you can download for free from the link in the description. So we basically the idea is we need to form a sphere using this spline. Okay. So I think there is an arc node within geometry node 3.1. Yes, we have an arc node. So let's uh, just make it uh, 180 degrees. So now we have an arc, but I'm going to make it uh, uh, erecting. So let's take a transform and let's take a 90 degree. Mm -hmm. And another 90 degree. Okay, so something like that should be good enough. And then we're going to instance that um, in a circular way. The way we're going to do is basically point instance. Okay, so this is to be the instance. And I think the easiest way is to instance on curve circle. Okay. Uh, right now we do not have a correct alignment. So let's just uh, take an alignment on splines. Uh, which is basically just uh, aligning ruler to vector by two times. Okay. I've explained in this tutorial, so I'm not going to repeat. Uh, let's just uh, rotate the 90 degree, which is kind of okay. Let's just uh, decrease this radius to 0 0.01. Okay. If you make the radius to 0, then there is no normal and the tangent are being distinguished to each other. So that's the reason you have to 0 0.01, something like that. And then you just increase the resolution, so finally you form a kind of a sphere. Right now this kind of looks kind of very ugly, but uh, it will just uh, be fine if you take a, let's say, bevel curve. So giving a little bit of thickness to that. Okay, tiny thickness. So it gives you kind of the illusion this is actually a nice sphere, but in reality it's just uh, splines. Okay. Next, we're basically just adding noise onto these curves. So adding noise is kind of simple. You just take the set position and let's add a noise 3D. Add the colors into the offsets. It's not very obvious because we always need to access the vertices inside this instance, which we require a realized instance. So finally, you increase the frequency then it looks like whatever stuff. So if you increase it too much frequency, it becomes very jaggy. So in this case, you need to increase the resolution. So let's bump that up to 320. And then you can manipulate that more freely. Uh, another thing that you potentially realize is because this is a noise, if you increase the frequency to be too high, then it becomes kind of trash. If you increase that too low, you can see this kind of pattern because they all coming from the same noise. So I would like to have a different seed for different splines. And that's basically my intention. I, I actually do not really remember. I didn't uh, look into too much detail of the, that Houdini tutorial. Uh, so I'm just uh, doing the way that I'm thinking. So you just uh, capture attributes of this uh, kind of spline and using that index as a seed so that even if you're at a low frequency, you make sure that for different spline, you have different seed. Okay. So this is basically the idea. There's one thing I would like to do is, uh, I, I'm not sure if I would like to have the pole being displaced or not. Okay. So I would like to X, maybe, uh, let's take a, a spline parameter. Let's take a spline parameter. It's just a personal preference, you do not necessarily to follow, depending on what you would like to do. Okay, and I'm going to take the scale, use the parameters. So now this kind of parameters goes from the 0 to 1 from the start to the end of the curve. In this case, I'm just going to use a color ramp. Okay, and uh, let's, let's do this. I'm going to make the effects 100% near each pole but uh, not really at each pole okay so this is just the one and let's add a dark i, I sometimes do not um, let's take that one and make it a black okay. 
so that uh, two post does not really being displaced uh, very much okay. something like that this is just a fine okay this is cool yes uh, sometimes this kind of node looks kind of large you can hit a control H to hide them okay. so let's just uh, make your node tree looks kind of better so now we have accomplished the basic functionality but we are going to add some hole uh, in this case, uh, the easiest way I'm thinking is to use the directional hole. I think uh, in Houdini tutorial, they are using a torus. Um, we can definitely do so using the proximity. But I do not really like the proximity in this case because uh, proximity is always a spherical. Um, there, there are lots of things I do not want to explain or comp making this tutorial too complicated. So I'll just uh, make it simple using di a directional hole. Directional fold, let's just use the z-axis. So set that to 2, which means the z-axis. So now you can see there is a, it's a, a perfect sphere, but uh, you have the noise. Okay. So here, we are just going to take a mass. Basically subtracting the directional fold. So this is our two, the same directional fold. So 1 minus 1 equals to 0. But we're going to offset a little bit with this, this one, so that there is a middle area which has a, which has some value. Okay. So this is the directional offset. You can determine the scale other things, but basically this is the idea. I'm going to switch this uh, directional fold from the sphere into arrow, so we can see a little better. So once we have completed that, finally it's just uh, your decision about how to increase the magnitude of this noise. Something like that. And another benefit using this directional fold is that you can rotate your empties. So now you have this effect. Okay. Uh, another benefit of using this kind of preset is that if you're selecting the controller, then you're moving the noise uh, as well. Uh, it may not be obvious in this case, depending on the frequency and many other things. Um, but uh, should I do only the location? Mm, I think you can try by yourself, so I'm not going to deal with too much of that. Okay, so uh, finally we're going to touch a little bit about the color. Dealing with the color is kind of simple. There are several things I would like to do. Uh, one is I want to have a white noise for each of these spline. So let's take a white noise, uh, which is basically a random value. So we can use a 2D because, um, or even 1D should be enough to generate a color. So we output these colors. Let's just uh, name that as a seed or whatever. Uh, name it as a color C and we need to set material uh, material okay once we set this material we also need to output these kind of uh, uh, values from this four okay uh, because we are doing the subtraction so the value may not be perfect zero to one so let, it will be better if we try to normalize it. So input the field and normalize it. Okay. So this let's name that as an app. So within the shader editor, uh, we can I think uh, principle BSDF is to redundant. We can remove that just to use the emission shader instead for the moment. Okay. So let's take an attribute color. We need a C, we need an A. Uh, okay. So by default, it should be black. So mix RGB. So this is the mix factor. And we take that into the color. So just to give you kind of a rough idea how things should uh, really look like. So we have a white and a black. If we go to the material preview, then you can see only the part which has been displaced has this white color. Okay. And then we need to define this as white color. Instead of uh, the white color, we're just going to use the color ramp. And plug the color 
into it or you can use the fact that it's essentially the same so here we can just define our own color so for example we can define i like the kind of reddish the other may be more mm, pinkish it uh, looks kind of very ugly <laughs> this is so bad but you get a kind of idea so you can dealing with that by yourself you can add more gradations or even using east east or other things it's completely your choice as long as you get a kind of idea and you know how to animate this kind of empties to give the results then it will just be fine so i hope you enjoy this tutorial i'll probably see you next time bye bye